There is nothing wrong with your internet. Do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I am Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve, and today we'll be discussing episode three of season three of Resident Alien. Oh my god, this season is just... Yes. <laughs> yeah, just keeps getting crazier and crazier. This is just going just so over the top, and I don't know how it's come back around, but is it? Like, I don't know. I really like yeah. it, though. <laughs> yep. Well, we do have some ratings numbers. This episode brought in a 0.05 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.281 million viewers. Not bad. Nope, not bad. All right, shall we jump in? Let's do it. Episode 3, 141 seconds. Harry accompanies the Hawthorns to Yellowstone to find out what the Greys are up to. I worry about Harry sometimes. Yes. And honestly, I'm worried about the whole family right now. Yeah. So let's see what they're up to. We open with something that really freaked me out. I don't know about you. Yes. We have Kate sitting in a, a nursery. She's rocking her baby, gazing sweetly down. And I'm thinking, oh, is she dreaming back to Matt? And then we hear sweet girl, sweet girl. I'm like, wait a minute. Yes. What? And then we see that the Greys take the baby from Kate's arms. So we're in an alien nursery. Yep. And this just kind of broke my heart because Kate is begging for more time with her child and asking her to just let her remember this time. Don't wipe my mind. And it's like, oh, yeah, just twist the knife. It's awful. But then I don't know if you caught it as she's being taken away that another woman was being brought into. Yes, I did. And I'm, I'm just like, oh, my God, how many people. Yeah. Or put through oh. that daily. And just, it was so bad. Like, honestly, had a pause right there. I'm like, okay, I need a moment. Yeah. Because, ow. But then we get kind of happy, fun stuff. But yeah. it's like, ooh. That, <laughs> sci-fi has done this to us with a lot of shows. And we know that. But, man, could, could you do that later? Let me recover. Not the opening scene. Right. Later on, we do see Harry, Asa, Darcy, and Dan sitting at the restaurant at the diner before it opens and Dan is chiding Harry for allowing Asta to go on a date with Joseph. Well, I mean, yeah, he let her because he didn't tell her everything, but at the same time, did he let her? I mean, let's be honest. Asta right. will do what yes. she wants to do. Yes, she will. But Asta reassured her father that she did this of her own volition. Darcy tells him that Asta was safe because she was her backup. And then we get it where it kind of mutes out and Darcy's explaining everything. And I love how we get the whole miming thing. Like she's, yeah. you know, showing Harry climbing a wall and everything. And then Harry hur hurriedly leaves. I mean, partly because he didn't get any pancake. Right. And after learning that Ben and his family were headed to Yellowstone. Not to see the Duttons, though, if you watch that show. Yep. <laughs> Uh, he le needs to learn more about Ben's abductions because there's got to be a connection to the Greys there. Yep, somewhere. So elsewhere, Mike and Liv try to brainstorm ideas regarding who's in the photo with Peter Bond, who was riding in the van with the late alien track. Mike surmises it might be a mime based on the person's posture. Mimes how? are clever. How? Yeah, how? I don't how? know how he came up with that okay mike was a detective right in new york i yes. remember how did the god this just blows my mind how he comes up with some of this stuff yes absolutely and Liv's face i think was everybody watching yes what? 
They can strike when you least expect it. Tack of the killer mimes, everyone. That's a Liv- movie somewhere. You know what yes. it is, right? <laughs> yeah, it has to. Liv suggests that since they didn't find a match for the fingerprints in the van, perhaps they should contact Lena. She has contacts in every three-letter government agency. Oh, poor Mike. Yeah, he's not a fan <laughs> of this, but Liv does it anyway. She leaves Lena a voicemail while Mike scribbles down updates about his life to pass on to his ex. Liv butchers yeah. it, misinterpreting <laughs> his scribblings, and that's just pure comedy. I shouldn't be laughing, but she's like, he's very, very oh, happy. Yeah. Like, yeah, so Lena would never know that Mike's right there writing yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. Next, Mike finds Judy with her mother, who's only 14 years older than her. Oh, my they, God. Yeah, they invite him to Judy's upcoming birthday party, which her mom is organizing on her behalf. Mike tentatively accepts the invitation, but it's clear he doesn't want to attend. Meanwhile, Ben, Kate, and Max prepare for their trip to Yellowstone. I had a question, though, about Judy's mom. Like, yeah. Why is she talking about a dowry that Mike has to pay? I'm like, okay, first of all, that's not how dowries work. But no. second, what? Yeah. Oh, well, we get more comedy ensuing because Harry pops up on the doorstep with a bag in hand. He whips up a sob story about losing his parents, which was just a very bad story. Yes. What if the same thing happens to Max and he's forced to eat you two because you get in a car accident? If I'm there, he can eat me. It's like, what? Apparently that's logical somewhere. Well, to Harry's race, maybe. And Max was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. It's like, what? Really? Well, Kate end up, ends up accepting him into the vacation fold with kind of sort of open arms. And later on, the Hawthorns and Harry arrive at the lodge where they're going to be staying. And Ben and Kate are grateful to be free of Harry's verbatim recitation of every Law and Order episode ever. There's a lot, lot, a lot of episodes. So, yeah. is he also doing the spinoff? That would take so much time. But, we have Max pulling our resident alien to the side to ask about his motives. Harry doesn't disclose that he's there to scope out the Grey's headquarters. Instead, he expresses his interest in this Talking raccoon display cartoon. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm here. Because it's informing visitors about Yellowstone's calderas. Yeah. Like, I know Mac isn't always the brightest, but right. yeah, even he's not buying that. Yeah. Later that night, Kate wakes up hearing a baby crying, and she asks Ben if he can hear it too, which he doesn't. Could this be the abducted baby calling her, or just a baby in the next room? Yeah, good question. Next, Liv wanders into the 59 where Judy's performing her requisite karaoke duties and Darcy works behind the bar. I was so mad at Judy right here. Yes. Because I will tell you, I don't you forget about me. From yeah. the classic, well, I guess not so classic, but Breakfast Club. I love that song. I was literally jamming to it earlier in that day when I was running around shopping, and she's talking about buttering bread. Yeah. I was so mad at Judy. (laughs) Yeah, Liv shows Darcy the photo of Peter Bach featuring Harry's plaid-covered arm. Darcy pretends not to know who Peter is. Before Liv departs, Judy plants a kiss on a napkin for the former to give to Mike. But not before also wiping it over her armpits, though. It's all about the scent. Yeah. I was like, Ugh. Not, no, not cute. No. Then Jay visits Asta at the clinic. She asks if Asta's okay following her weird date. Asta reassures Jay that all is well. Jay proceeds to invite Asta to go on to go to a double feature film showing on Saturday night. Asta gently rejects her, citing that she has to work a double. Once Jay departs, Darcy enters Asta's office. She reveals that Liv and Mike are trying to figure out who's in the photo with Peter. They're circling Harry even if they don't know it yet. Asta realizes she must warn Harry, 
She prepares to call him, but Darcy yanks the phone out of her hands. She smashes it on the floor as one does. Darcy worries they'll track everything to Asta's phone and her conversations with Harry. Darcy's tenuous grasp on technology aside, the BFFs decide to head to Harry's cabin to destroy anything linking him to the late alien tracker. Okay, that was kind of funny, because it's like, yes. Darcy, like, you don't need the actual phone to no. have those records. No. And now, Asta has to go buy a new phone. I'm just saying not the best, okay? No. Later, we have Harry barging into the Hawthorne Hotel, wearing nothing but his tidy whities and a matching robe that's wide open. I love that he's like, I need to use this door in between the rooms. Yeah. He wasn't going to come around. Come on, Ben. How long have you no. known him at this point? Oh, and uh, did you catch the pastel blue manicure he received from the woman down at the front desk? Piercing and all. Yes. And that's certainly an image. But I love how he's like, I broke a nail. Yeah. <laughs> Kate's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Harry urges Ben to choose where they're going to go and what they're going to do that day. And Kate wants to see Old Faithful, so Ben agrees with her. Of course, Harry believes Ben will select the destination that will lead him to the Greys because they're in his brain. Right. And Ben is going to subconsciously go there. But, I mean, he doesn't because he doesn't know about it yet. I don't know. Yeah. It'll work out, I guess. Yeah, it will work out. <laughs> and Harry doesn't know about Kate's abduction yet, which I'm kind of surprised he hasn't. Put that kind together. Kind of squirreled it. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dan accompanies Asa and Darcy to Harry's cabin, where they find a closet full of plaid shirts. I mean, have you watched him walk around? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to burn everything. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, how are they going to explain that? He's going to come back and be like, where are my shirts? Yeah. Where's all my clothes? Oh, sorry, Harry. It looks like a shopping trip will be in your future. And it'll probably be more planned anyway, let's be honest. Right. At Yellowstone, the group, and I'm saying this tentatively, admires Old Faithful. <laughs> because yeah. nobody seemed really into it. No. But Ben ends up rejoining them after purchasing a beanie from someone who works for Sullivan Gravel Company. They've been in business for over 70 years. Okay. It was around 70 years ago when that little girl with the snow globes stumbled upon the grays in Yellowstone. Harry notices Ben has scrawling, scrawled, excuse me, the Sullivan Gravel Company logo all over their map. Company must be the Gray's headquarters. Yep. And then he also starts itching because he just bought a hat off some random dude. Like, elsewhere, Liv gets a phone call from Lena. Lena has a contact who can run the fingerprints through a more comprehensive military database. However, Liv's high comes crashing down when she reads about herself on the front page of the patient's post. Who is writing this? I was a little upset because the yeah. article accuses her of utilizing precious resources to chase her fascination with aliens. One source, quote, close to her, calls her a liar. Out. Like, we know it's not her husband. Nope. Gotta be grandma. We'll get to it, but. Yeah. Then Liv shows Mike Judy's bar napkin, which contains her lipstick kiss and armpit scent. I love that she had it in a plastic bag. Yes. <laughs> Mike claims he's grown somewhat fond of Judy, but recognizes that he's leading her on. Now, are you going to do the right thing, Mike? At Harry's cabin, Darcy and Asta continue to burn Harry's clothes. Darcy reveals she's glad she knows about Harry. Now she can help Asta with all of it. Asta heads inside to wash dishes. Dan has a heart-to-heart -heart with his daughter. She's always in crisis mode. What does Asta's life look like when she's not trying to save the world? Well, we might get to explore that in season four or later in season three. Who knows? Well, next, Harry sits in a car outside the Sullivan Gravel Company headquarters. He notices the employees are too pretty to be working the night shift. That he was funny. Yes, it was. And random, yeah. Yeah, he believes they're all gray hybrid. Suddenly, Max pops out from the back seat to scare Harry. As the new alien tracker, he wants to assist Harry with his mission. Instead, Harry gives Max an orange, ordering him to peel it while he's gone. He'll eat it when he returns. 
Meanwhile, Mike finds Judy at the 59 and pulls her aside for a difficult chat. Mike draws a line in the sand, revealing he's not looking for anything serious right now. Taken aback, Judy eventually tells him she understands. They shake hands before he departs. Darcy notices the bar napkin Judy was doodling on. It says, Mr. and Mrs. Sheriff. Ah, that's got to bite a little bit. Yeah, it was sad. Yep. Darcy comforts Judy as she cries. Judy wonders when it will be her turn. Girl, preach. Yeah. (laughs) It was sad because we know Mike. I don't want to say he's dumb, but he's clueless to like social cues. Yes. Yes. And Darcy, any time she seems to be like around him, is like over the top. Even like way before they had this interaction. Yes. So it's like it was really sad for that moment because Darcy's like, yes, all in. And Mike's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Side note, we have, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce this right. Lamia, I think, delivering yeah. this beautiful, heartbreaking performance here. But sometimes I feel Judy's teasing crosses in the mean spirited territory. Like it's really becoming like this running gag where she's hilarious. Don't get me wrong, but it's getting. I don't want to necessarily say tiresome, but right. it's getting painful because it's like, yeah. we, like she's not the whipping post here. She seems to be like this sweetheart with the sensitive soul. And we see her with like her cat and how nice she is. And with her friends, it's like, I think we all just really hope Judy finds someone who she can love with all her weirdness and over the topness. So at the same time, though, I feel Mike rejecting her has more to do with his issues than hers. And yeah. like he's just coming out of a relationship anyway. Right. Back to the reality here of our show. <laughs> we have Harry breaking into Sullivan Gravel Company trailer. And he notices the floor has a potential trap door leading to their ship. Except a portal that opens and an alien emerges. And... Can we just say that Harry's really bad at hiding as well? Yes, absolutely. But before said alien notices Harry, he does notice that the doorknob is missing, and then he sees Harry's shoe, and he starts walking all slowly. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but before he can get to Harry, Max shocks the hell out of him with that alien tracker device, which I thought that was kind of funny. Yes, absolutely. And then he also presents Harry with a freshly peeled orange. Well, that's multitasking. He was also trying out a catchphrase. Did anyone ask for an orange? Yeah. I love Harry's like, are you really trying to catchphrase? Yeah. That's not the way to go. But no, you'll work it out later. And I felt bad, too, because then Harry, like, sends Max off. Go back to the car. Well, first of all, yeah, it's safer for you there. I get that. But, like, he looked so down. Yes. So you're a kid. Come on. But we have Harry go and explore the underbelly of the trailer, which, what the hell? That doesn't look like a normal underneath of a trailer to me. No, it's not. And this huge cement and pipe filled, like, hallway leads to this cavernous reservoir. What do the Greys plan to do with all that water? Well, I'm guessing it's not something good. No. Following morning, Ben... He's trying to heat up some stones to give Kate a hot stone massage. Unfortunately, something spills awful because one of those stones was probably a poor turtle. And Kate then becomes distracted. Thank God she's distracted. I'm just saying because that smell is probably God awful. Yes. Because what is that she's hearing? It's a baby's cry. So she starts following it down the hallway to a hotel room and then starts banging on this door. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what is happening? And a woman opens the door and she sees a baby on her hip. And Kate's like, is that your baby? Okay, that's kind of a strange question if you were right. banging on somebody's door. And then kind of starts to break down and ask if she can hold the baby. And when Ben catches up to her, he apologizes to the woman for Kate and leads her away. That was just like, oh, ow, again, yes. sci-fi. Very, very painful to say the least. Yes. This Kate storyline is going to be just heartbreaking. Yes, it is. 
Meanwhile, Harry sits in his hotel room. He tries to calculate why the greys need the water. The greys are adept at destroying things, not storing them. Also, they may be part human, but they're more intelligent than human. He heads to the lobby to watch the cartoon raccoon talk about Yellowstone's caldera again. Then it all clicks. He realizes if they can fill that cavern full of water, they can connect it via tunnels to the magma chamber underneath the caldera. The water would heat up and cause the caldera to erupt, becoming the worst natural disaster in history. The greys want to kill humans and take over the planet, even though they can't survive in the Earth's atmosphere for long. Later, Mike and Liv run into Liv's Gran, the source of the site in the newspaper hit piece. Liv's Gran claims she didn't call her granddaughter a liar, just someone who loves making up stories. Oh, this lady is I was else. so mad. Yes. Like, Everything that happened in that moment, and even as clueless as Mike is sometimes, he realized that everything that was happening there was just so bad. Yes. And I've never wanted to smack a granny as much as I wanted to in yes, that moment. Yes, absolutely. Then she insults Liv before leaving in a flurry. Once Liv and Mike get back into their car, Lena takes Liv. Apparently, the prints in the van belong to Dr. Wendy Beasley, a retired military chemist. However, as Mike celebrates this development, Liv bursts into tears. I try so hard, she says out. This is a gut punch of major proportions. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. Liv is just this sweet person. I don't understand. How this woman is so mean to her. Right. You're supposed to be like her support. Yep. And you're not supporting nothing. Narcissist at its finest right there. Realizing it's about her not so nice grandma, Mike consoles Liv. I know, deputy, he tells her. And even put his hand on her shoulder or I can't remember now. But I'm like, okay, you know, this is not Mike's. Strong points. Yes, thank you. And so the fact that he did that, it was like, okay, you know what? You realize it, that was needed, and I applaud you. Yes. I mean, it's doing what normal people do, but, I mean, we know how off-putting it probably was for Mike, too. Right. Next thing we see is Harry eating with Austin Darcy at the diner. Dan serves them food, of course, because... Man, I don't know about you, but every time I see them eat, I'm like, damn, I'm hungry. I want one of those burgers. (laughs) (laughs) So Harry then explains that he can stop the Greys from blowing up Yellowstone, which could happen uh, in about a year. Okay, let's do that, please. But, well, you know, I can't exactly prevent a super volcano from erupting on its own, though. It erupts about every 600,000 years, and the last time it erupted was 634,000 years ago. That baby is crowning. Harry remarked that, well, wouldn't it be funny if I saved the world from the Greys only for Yellowstone to blow everything to smithereens? Ha <laughs> ha. What? Yeah. And the Harry comedic timing gag it really did get me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Tunic, I love Alan Tunic. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. He's a genius with this. Asta then wonders what they can do with all of this information. And Dan reminds them that volcanoes are a natural part of life. They should go out and live the best life that they can. I am loving Dan right now. But I love what would you have done without this? Well, I didn't know about it, so I would just just do. Yeah, well, just do. Yep. Meanwhile, the Hawthorns have returned to their home after the trip. And again, quite twist in the knife because we see Kate carrying Max upstairs sleeping and she just looked so distraught. Yes. Darcy surprises Judy at her door with a slice of birthday cake, a present, and, of course, candle. Yep. And at the same time, we have Mike and Liv dancing in the vehicle because they had gotten some information, and I think it was kind of Mike's way to get Liv to cheer up. Yeah. And Asta blows off her double shift to attend the double feature with Jay, which was sweet, but I'm like, um, you're at a clinic, though? Does that mean nobody's working it? Right. Finally, Harry receives a visitor at home. Meet Heather, a blue avion from the Galactic Federation, 
who's there to serve Harry with the summons. She explains he broke galactic laws when he didn't honor his contract with the Greys to vacate Earth. So Harry must leave the planet immediately. Son of a bee, Harry mutters. <laughs> Will Harry obey the law and leave Earth before he can save it? Will the Greys succeed in their plan? How long until Ben and Kate connect the abduction dots? That may take forever. <laughs> yes. Only time and more episodes will tell. We'd love to hear your thoughts on each and every episode this season. Our deadline for feedback is 6 p.m. Eastern every Friday during the season. You can send your feedback via email or audio to contact us at fangirlzone.com. Please review and rate us for, on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcasts. With good ratings and reviews, it helps other fans of the show find us as there are several other resident alien podcasts out there. Tell your friends, and we do hope you're enjoying our podcast. And don't forget to check out the other great Fangirl Zone podcasts. You can find everything you need to get a hold of us on www.fangirlzone.com. You can go right to our contacts page and shoot us a little message there because it comes right to us. We are filling in all of our socials everywhere so you can find us. And like Steve said, we have podcasts everywhere. And our new page is up and running, our new site. Yay! So for this episode of Resident Alien on Sci-Fi Talk, I'm Steve. It might seem long to humans, but when compared to the age of planet Earth, a human life would only be 141 seconds long. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And until next time. <laughs>